And then now this morning to our annual quiz and our two leaders for the quiz this morning, Mary Solway and Andy Locke. Mary Solway has been an active U3A member since 2016. She's given us informative and most interesting presentations at the pavilion. And Mary was a member of our committee, editing and producing a colourful and vibrant newsletter. So thank you for that, Mary. And together with Rosemary Walsh and other volunteers, she organised a most successful U3A study day, the Ex Estuary Past, Present and Future in Exmouth Pavilion. And it really was a great event. Now, Andy Locke is also an active member of our U3A, joining in 2015 and soon getting involved. Like Mary, he worked hard to make sure our first U3A study day was a great success, timekeeping the speakers so diligently. In 2018, as a relatively new bowler and as a member of the Madeira Club in Exmouth, he secured a terrific and decisive success in the national over 60s singles competition. This morning, Mary and Andy have drawn on their many talents to set us a wonderful quiz. So with paper and pens ready, over to you, Andy and Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, U3A July picture quiz. Uh, what I'm going to do now is hopefully share the screen with everybody. OK, then. Um, Hopefully you've all got uh, a pen and um, a piece of paper large enough to write 40, 40 answers. Although there aren't 40 questions, there are in fact 40 answers. So uh, if everybody's ready, we shall make a start with the Summer Picture Quiz 2021, which is an A to Z quiz. So we've actually got 26 Questions. Question one begins, or the answer will begin with the letter A, and uh, question 26 will begin with the letter Z. And we'll be working through them in alphabetical order. So um, we'll go with question, make a start with question number one, and the answer for this will begin with the letter A. So um, what I would like to know is these ladies share which forename that begins with the letter A. They all share the same forename and the answer begins with the letter A. This is question number one. All right, question number two, the answer for this begins with the letter B. And I would like to know which B connects this valley in Exmoor with this winning jockey and also the Exmouth Community Theatre. There's one word which begins with the letter B that connects all of those three things. Okay, question number three is the next one. The answer for this begins with the letter C. And uh, I would like to know which London C connects these three pictures. There's the first one. Picture number two. And picture number three. Which London C connects these three pictures? All right, question number four. For this one, um, I've got four films for you to uh, identify now. They all begin with the letter D, 
And uh, when we go through the answers, you'll get one point for each one that's correct. OK, so we've got four films all beginning with the letter D. So the first film is from 1988. The second film is from 1989. Film number three is from 1941. And film number four from 2019. Those four films all begin with the letter D. All we need you to do is uh, name the film. Okay, question number five, the next one, the letter E is where we're up to now. And I would like to know uh, which TV series that this shot is taken from. Begins with the letter E. Question five, which TV series is this shot taken from? Right, question number six. Uh, beginning with the letter F, simply name this island nation. Which island nation is this? Question number six. Right, question number seven. I would like you to identify this person whose surname begins with the letter G. Who is this? His surname begins with the letter G. That's question number seven. Question number eight then, uh, what am I describing here? A human has one, a time lord has two, and an octopus has three. What am I describing? A human has one, a time lord has two, and an octopus has three. And that begins with the letter H. Right, that was question number eight. Next one, question number nine. We're up to the letter I. The name of which chemical element is derived from the Greek word for violet? The name of which chemical element is derived from the Greek word for violet? And that answer begins with the letter I. That's question number nine. Okay, the next one then, question number 10. Located in Worcester Cathedral, this is the tomb of which English king? Located in Worcester Cathedral, this is the tomb of which English king? And this answer is the letter J. Right, question number 11. In which Lake District town can you find the Derwent Pencil Museum, the home of the first pencil? In which Lake District town can you find the Derwent Pencil Museum, the home of the first pencil? Well, that was question number 11. Right, question number 
12. I would like to know what superlative adjective that begins with the letter L can geographically describe all of these. Okay, I'll leave those on the screen for uh, a little while longer. Which superlative adjective that begins with the letter L can geographically describe all of these? That's question number 12. Right, question number 13 then. We're halfway through. Question 13, which M, M is this province in Ireland, this city in northeastern Germany, and it's also the surname of this TV comedy family. Which M is this prov province in Ireland, city in northeast Germany, and also the surname of this TV comedy family. That's question number 13. All right, question number 14. Which five letter word beginning with the letter N can precede these words to make new ones. So we're looking for a five letter word that begins with the letter N, which can precede these words to make new ones. That's question number 14. Okay, question number 15, the next one. What was the code name for the Allied invasion of Europe on the 6th of June, 1944? What was the code name for the Allied invasion of Europe on the 6th of June, 1944? That's question number 15. Right, question number 16. It's an interesting one for you, this. It's the letter P that we're up to now. The letter P which stands for paint. And over the years, paint colours have got increasingly imaginative. So what we've got here, we've got, I'm gonna show you eight paint colours, but only four of them are authentic names. The other four, uh, Mary's made up. So um, I would like you to pick which four of these you think are the real ones? Okay, you get one point for each one that you got. So the first one's Precious Pink, followed by Purple Pout, Putting Green, Peach Bellini, Paprika Fire, Pebble Shaw, Porcelain Doll, and Peacock Strut. Now, four of those are real paint colours, the other four Mary has made up, so uh, we just need you to pick which four of those you think are the real ones, and you'll get one point for each one of those that you get correct. So I'll leave those on the screen for uh, a few seconds more. I say four of them are real, four of them are made up. Okay then, on to question number 17. Which fictional sport is being represented here in Lego? 
took me ages to build that as well. <laughs> Which fictional sport is represented here in Lego? That's question number 17, that one. For question number 18, uh, I have uh, three currencies for you to identify. They all begin with the letter R, and we're looking for the name of the currency, not the name of the issuing country. OK, so you get one point again for each one of these. That's correct. This is the first one. And the second one. And the third one. There we go. Three currencies for you to identify. And we're looking for the name of the currency, not the name of the country. OK. And they all begin with the letter R. OK, question number 19, the next one. It's only six miles long. What is the shortest river in Devon? It's only six miles long. What's the name of the shortest river in Devon? Uh, question number 20, somebody for you to identify here. His, uh, his forename and his surname both begin with the letter T. Who was the captain of Stingray? His forename and his surname both begin with the letter T. Who is the captain of Stingray? That's question number 20. Okay, number 21 is the next one. In 1516, Sir Thomas More published a book, the title of which has come to define an imagined state of perfection. What is the one word title? In 1516, Sir Thomas More published a book, the title of which has, be, has come to define an imagined state of perfection. What is the one word title? That's question number 21. And it begins with the letter U. Question number 22, there are three points available here, one for each correctly identified European capital city. They all begin with the letter V. Here's the first one. And the second one. And the third one. Three European capital cities. They all begin with the letter V and you'll get one point for each one of them that you get correct. All right, question number 23 is the next one. Japanese horseradish is more commonly known as what? Japanese horseradish, more commonly known as what? Beginning with the letter W. Right, question number 24, we're up to the letter X. Now, we had a bit of trouble finding answers that would begin with the letter X. 
So we've decided to do it slightly differently for this one. Question 24, X marks the spot. I've got five clues to towns in Devon. You'll get one point for each correct answer. The answers do not begin with the letter X, okay? It's just that we've, we've worked it in as X marks the spot. So number one, in the 16th century, this town was Britain's third largest port. In the 16th century, this town was Britain's third largest port. Don't forget these answers do not begin with the letter X. It's just an X on a map, that's all. Number two, this is the birthplace of Sir Francis Drake and has an industrial canal connected to its time as a centre for tin mining. This is the birthplace of Sir Francis Drake and has an industrial canal connected to its time as a centre for tin mining. That was number two in question 24. All right, town number three is the home of the Britannia Royal Naval College. Town number three is the home of the Britannia Royal Naval College. Town number four, this town in East Devon has an annual Pixie Day, which is usually held in June, but this year it's uh, being held on the 25th of September. So uh, if you want to go, there's a date for your diary. This town in East Devon has an annual Pixie Day, usually held in June, but this year it's going to be on the 25th of September. That's town number four. And the last one is town number five. Known historically as the Rebel Town, you will find the terminus of the Seaton Tramway here at Kingsden Station. Known historically as the Rebel Town, you'll find the terminus of the Seaton Tramway here at Kingsden Station. So there we are, five towns in Devon for you to identify. Don't forget, none of them begin with the letter X. It's just an X on a map. I'll leave those up for a few more seconds. And we can then move on to question number 25. What is the common name of this plant? It's also the national flower of El Salvador. What is the common name of this plant? which is also the national flower of El Salvador. That's question number 25. Which brings us to the last one in our A to Z quiz. So this one will begin with the letter Z. And I've got three football clubs here for you. We've got Watford, Workington and Everton. And for varying reasons, all three of them play a tune based on a traditional folk song called Johnny Todd to greet their teams onto the pitch at all of their home games. The same tune was more famously known as the theme to which BBC drama of the 1960s and the 1970s. So the three football clubs, Watford, Workington and Everton, play a tune based on the traditional folk song Johnny Todd to greet their teams onto the pitch at all of their home games. The same tune was more famously known as the theme to which BBC drama of the 1960s and the 1970s. And that concludes the questions for the A to Z quiz. So we'll, um, we can have a little break if, uh, if that's okay for five minutes or so whilst you look at a picture of Exmouth. And then we will run through the answers. Both of you on that, really inspirational with all the A to Z questions, very clever. To be fair, Mary has worked a lot harder than I did on it, to be honest. All right, Christine. okay, thank you. That's thank the way you. we do it. <laughs> I read them out, Mary writes them basically. <laughs> right. 
Um, Andy um, okay. and Mary, thank you very much. Really lovely, attractive quiz for us this morning. And uh, would you like to do the answers? And then what we're going to do, um, there's just the accolade of winning, which of course is fantastic if you if you won, but just competing is great as well. We're going to have an overall winner for one person only in their household with nobody else there to help them and another winner with one or more people in their household okay so there will be two overall winners okay so right let's go with the answers then okay Ready? okay here we go then right question number one we wanted to know um these ladies shared which forename all beginning with the letter A. So it was Angela Merkel, Angela Lansbury, Angela Rippon, and Angela Mortimer, who was a 1960s oh, British yeah. tennis yes. champion. Yes, yes. So Angela or Angela was the, uh, the answer to question number one. So question two, which B connects this valley in Exmoor? Oh, with with this uh, winning jockey and Exmouth Community Theatre. So we have Dune Valley from Lorna Dune, which was written by R.D. Blackmore. Ooh. We then have a picture of Rachel Blackmore, who won the 2021 Grand National on a horse called Manella Times, and also the Blackmore Theatre in Bicton Street. So the word we're looking for is Blackmore for question number two. So question three, which London Sea connects these three pictures? So we've got the first one, Chelsea Clinton. We've then got a Chelsea boot and a Chelsea pensioner photographed at the Chelsea Flower Show. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chelsea was the word that we're looking for for question number three. Right, question number four, one point for each of these you got right. So there's four points for, for question number four. First film, 1988, Die Hard. The second one from 1989, Driving Miss Daisy. The third one from 1941, Dumbo. And from 2019, Downton Abbey. So one point for each of those that you get correct. Question five was the letter E, from which TV series is this shot taken? And it's from Endeavour. Question number six, the name of this island nation is Fiji. Question number seven, who is this? His surname begins with the letter G, Yuri Gagarin. He was a Soviet cosmonaut who was the first human to orbit the earth on the 12th of April, 1961. Amazing, it's 60 years ago since that happened now. Yuri Gagarin, question number seven. Number eight, what was I describing here? A human has one, a time lord has two, and an octopus has three, and the answer is a heart. Question number nine, the name of which chemical element is derived from the Greek word for violet? Iodine. It comes from the Greek word iodes, meaning violet colored. And when heated, iodine gives off a purple vapor. So that was question number nine. <clears throat> question number 10, located in Worcester Cathedral, this is the tomb of which English king? The answer is King John. Question number 11, in which Lake District town would you find the Derwent Pencil Museum, the home of the first pencil? And you would find it in Keswick. <laughs> Mm. 
Now then, question number 12, we were looking for a superlative adjective beginning with the letter L, which can geographically describe all of these. And uh, the word is largest. Each is the largest country in their respective continents. Um, province in Ireland, a city in northeast Germany, and the surname of the TV comedy family is Munster. Question 14, which five letter word beginning with N can precede these words to make new ones? So we have dress, time, club and cap. And the word we're looking for is night, as in night dress, night time, night club, and night cap. So that was question 14, letter N. Question 15, the code name for the Allied invasion of Europe on the 6th of June 1944 was Overlord. And there we have one of Robert Kappa's pictures of American troops heading for Omaha Beach on D-Day. 6th of June, 1944, Overlord. Right, number 16, this was the, uh, the paint question. So those were the choices and the answers were, the real ones are purple pout, putting green, pebble shore and porcelain doll. Those are the real ones, the other four may be made up. So each one of those that you get correct is worth one point. Right then, question number 17, which fictional sport is represented here in Lego? It's Quidditch from the Harry Potter world. Question number 18, there were three currencies to identify here. The first one from South Africa is the Rand. The second one from Russia is the Ruble. And the third one from India is the Rupee. So again, one point for each one of those that you got right. Question number 19 then, it's only six miles long. The shortest river in Devon, the River Sid. Right, question number 20. His forename and his surname both begin with the letter T. The captain of Stingray was Troy Tempest. Question number 20, Troy Tempest. Question 21, in 1516, Sir Thomas More published a book, the title of which has come to define an imagined state of perfection. The one word title of the book, Utopia. The Latin version was first published in 1516, but the English version wasn't published until 1551. Right, question number 22 was the letter V, three points available here for these correctly identified European capital cities. The first one, Vienna in Austria. The second one in Lithuania, Vilnius. And the third one from Malta, Valletta. Each one of those that you got right is worth one point. Question number 23 then, Japanese horseradish is more commonly known as wasabi. Number 24, X marks the spot, the clues to the Devon towns. Number one in the 16th century, this town was Britain's third largest port, Biddeford. Number two, the birthplace of Sir Francis Drake uh, has an industrial canal connected to its time as a centre for tin mining, Tavistock. 
Number three, the home of the Britannia Royal Naval College, Dartmouth. Number four, this town in East Devon has an annual Pixie Day, usually held in June, but this year it will be on the 25th of September, Ottery St Mary. And number five, known historically as the Rebel Town, you'll find the terminus of the Seaton Tramway here, Colliton, number five. So again, one point for each of those that you got correct. And we move on to the answer for number 25. The common name of this plant, which is also the national flower of El Salvador, is the yucca. And the last one then, number 26. Three football clubs, Watford, Workington and Everton. All play a tune based on the traditional folk song Johnny Todd to greet their teams onto their pitch at the home games. The same tune was more famously known as the theme to the BBC drama of the 60s and 70s called Z Cars. Which ran from 1962 to 1978. So then if you would then like to tot up the, uh, your score. The total number of points available is 40. And there on the screen is a delightful picture of lovely oh, Salterton taken by Mary. Right, so anyone with 40? So you can all put your mics on again now. Right, 39. 38, 37, 36, right. 35, 34. You got 34. That's Melanie. Who got 34? Yeah. Who's speaking? Who's that? Melanie. Oh, well oh, done. Well done, well Melanie. Well done, Melanie. Well done to you. Crikey, that's very good. Brilliant. Oh, good. Brilliant. Yeah. 33. Oh, 30. Yeah, Christine, I did. It's Liz. I got 33 on my own. Oh, 33 on your own. Oh, well done. Well done. You can hear me. Very good, can you hear me? Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, congratulations. Well done. So we've got Melanie's a joint uh, first and Liz. Oh, as a single first. Um, anyone else get 33? In case, could I ask? in case we did have a tie this morning, um, yes. we did have a tie break question, which we can still Ooh. ask just yeah. for fun if everybody would. Uh, yeah. would oh, like yeah. to oh yes, just, go just for it. Laugh. Yeah. One more question. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, the tie break question. There you are then. The winners of this year's Eurovision Song Contest were Italy, who scored 524 points which was exactly 524 points more than we scored. <laughs> uh, what, the tiebreak question is, what is the maximum number of points that are available at the Eurovision Song Contest? So if, uh, if, you know, if everybody gave you the top score, how many points would you have got? Thousand. <laughs> <laughs> So just write, write an answer down or just think of a think of a number and then it's only for a bit of fun that's that's what the tie break question would have been and the answer is 912 Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> very good andy and it's 912 more than the uk got <laughs> <laughs> that, that rubs assault in the wound doesn't it yeah, <laughs> oh, doesn't it mm. ah right in case oh yeah know. very good oh excellent <laughs> yeah good. Um, well you get the most, all goes yeah, very much the most back it all goes well right i'll now stop the <laughs> So that. can I so, just confirm? So the a joint winner was Melanie Parker yeah, and John. And 
and John. And John, yeah. Melanie and John, joint winners. And then Liz, and I'm not sure of the surname for the single winner. Elizabeth Bennett. Yeah, Elizabeth Bennett. Oh, Elizabeth Bennett. Well yeah. done. Congratulations. Really good. That brilliant. Brilliant quiz. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very clever. Loved amazing. all the photographs. Questions. Great Good questions. questions. Good idea to do the alphabetical order. Uh, boxing some of us as well, especially with the paint questions. That, that was clever. Um, so very, very good. So if we can all give Andy and Mary a resounding <laughs> clap as our applause. Thank you. Thank you very much.